Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well. In honor of the Sephora Spring Savings event, I've partnered up with Sephora to share with y'all some of my must-have products that you can find in store or on sephora.com. So without further ado, if y'all wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream to prep and hydrate our model's skin. I use this cream so often because it works so well with makeup. I never have to worry about it peeling up or creating a weird texture when I apply foundations and powders on top of it. For those with more oily skin, I'll tell you another product from Tatcha I enjoy using instead of this cream is their Dewy Serum. It's a bit more lightweight, but it has that same plumping and hydrating effect. And if you find you have really dry skin, try layering them, the serum first and then the cream. It'll work wonders. But now that I have this skincare well massaged into Christina's skin, I'm going to move on to foundation using the Makeup Forever HD Skin Undetectable Longwear Foundation in the shade Warm Sand. I think this is a perfect match for her. It blends right in. It. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit here so you can take a look as to what's happening. This is a really beautiful foundation that we've been seeing all over social media media lately. It's a newer foundation but has already gained a lot of fans and for good reason. As you can see here it really has that true to skin finish. It's a medium coverage foundation but you can play around with it and what I mean by that is you can shear it out a bit, maybe mix in your moisturizer for a light coverage effect or you can build it up for a fuller coverage. Our model today, Christina, has a couple, you know, little blemishes around the jawline and chin, which is you know, perfectly normal. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to keep this, for the most part, on the medium coverage side around the face. And in the areas I want a little more coverage, like around the jawline, I'll add a little extra foundation. So now that we have this foundation blended in, I'm using the Shue Essentials High Coverage Concealer in the shade Chiffon and applying this to the under eyes to highlight and conceal this area before blending it in with a sponge. You all have seen me use this concealer time and time again over the last, I don't know, six or seven months. I love the coverage of this concealer. I love how it wears throughout the day. I love how it blends, although, I do wanna say, with this specific formula, you wanna blend it in right away. It's not one of those concealers that you can apply all over the areas of the face you wanna highlight, let it sit there for a few minutes, and then come back to blend out. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. I've been there, done that, tried it, didn't work for me. This formula dries down really quick. So once you apply it, you wanna blend it out right away. But with that said, once it's blended and set, it stays. It doesn't go anywhere, which is another reason why I love it so much. Now, once this is blended, I'm gonna use this Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 8.2W to add back some dimension to the face, specifically the hollows of her cheekbones, the jawline, around the forehead, and a little beneath the nose and chin before blending this in with the sponge. This is the type of product I like to use when I do highlight and contour around the face. Because it's super hydrating and is a cream formula, it gives me time to blend it in for that seamless finish. Other great concealers for this are the Too Faced Born This Way concealers or the Anastasia Beverly Hills concealers or the One Size concealers. I mean, there's a lot of fantastic options to choose from. It really just comes down to selecting one that matches your undertone, which is why I love using traditional concealers or foundations for this step. There are a lot of shades to choose from. And if you've been wanting to try this for yourself, there's no better time than now because of the Sephora Spring Savings event. I know we've been seeing it all over TikTok and social media, but I'm gonna take this time while I'm blending this product in to explain everything to those who you know may just not know. So first and foremost, if you're not already, you gotta sign up for the Sephora Beauty Insider Program. To make it super easy, I'll include a link down below. It only takes you know a couple of minutes. Now, let's talk the tiers and how it applies to their savings event. The Rouge members had first access on April 1st with 20% off. The VIB members now have access as of yesterday, April 5th, with 15% off, and Beauty 
insiders have access starting tomorrow, April 7th, with 10% off. And the event ends for everyone on April 11th. You can shop in store, you can shop online and have it shipped. You can even shop online and pick it up in store. If you're shopping in store, you, you don't need a promo code. But if you're shopping online, regardless of the tier you're in, you'll want to use the code Save Spring at checkout. You can shop as many times as you want during the dates of the event that applies for your tier up until April 11th. And by the way, during this event, all, and I mean all Sephora collection items are 30% off. And that goes for anyone and everyone, regardless of the tier you're in. I mention this because <laughs> I didn't know this myself up until like a year ago, but I'll include all the details of the event down below in the description box in case I missed anything. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that now is the time to stock up on your favorite products or products that you've been wanting to try out, like concealers for contouring and bronzing. As I've done here, you can see once it's blended, it looks quite seamless and, and it adds back in some dimension in the face in a really subtle way. Now moving on, I'm using this Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Happy and blending this in with a blush brush to the apples of her cheeks. You see me use this all the time because I think this shade looks so flattering on a variety of different skin tones. And I find the formula of this liquid blush blends beautifully, specifically on wet makeup, meaning it, you know, it, it hasn't been set with powder yet. Not to say that you can't use this on top of powder, but in my experience, I find it best to layer and blend the liquid products together first and then use powders afterwards. Sometimes when you use liquid products on top of powders, they grip onto the powder in a way that's not the most flattering. It can look a little patchy or muddy. But as you see here, without much effort, I'm pressing this blush in and diffusing it out, which is adding a beautiful pinch of color to her cheeks as the last liquid product to finish off the complexion. And then using the One Size Ultimate Blurring Setting Powder to start setting the makeup into place with a powder puff. As always, I start with a concealer around the eyes first, as makeup in this area is usually first to crease on most people. And then I'll proceed to setting the makeup around the rest of the face. Notice I'm not using a lot of powder to do this either. A little goes a long way. I'm also keeping in mind that I will be using this powder to bake with later on in specific areas. But regardless of how much powder you choose to use on yourself, what's most important here is how I'm applying it and pressing motions, really pressing it into the makeup, into the skin. This will give you the most flawless result as opposed to sweeping and dragging it across the skin. We just did all that work to blend in those liquid products. So why would we want to disturb that blend? You know what I mean? So tapping and pressing is really important here. Next up, I'm using the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer in the shade Island Ting to further emphasize the contour product we used earlier. So referring back to what I was saying a minute ago, I used liquid products first, right? Set it with the setting powder and then use the powder products on top. The liquid products already did a lot of the work for us, so we don't have to go in with an obscene amount of powder products. Just a little does it to accentuate and complement the liquids. I really like these Fenty bronzers for a couple of reasons. One being the formula. It doesn't ever look patchy or muddy on the skin for me. And two, the shade range. They have bronzers for everyone, ranging from really deep skin tones all the way to really fair skin tones. And what's happening here is I've gone back to the one size powder and I'm using this to bake her jawline, which will brighten this area and sharpen the contour along with underneath the eyes, which will catch any potential fallout we have from the eyeshadows. Not to worry, it looks a little crazy now, but once I wipe this all off later, it'll be perfectly fine. To begin on the eyes, I'm using the Makeup by Mario Master Matte's eyeshadow palette to start creating a soft, smoky eye on Christina. I really wanted to use this palette for today's tutorial because it's a palette that I often use, and I'll tell you why. Most of the time, most of the time, clients request a soft glam style of eye makeup, which is what we're gonna do today. 
as a makeup artist, it's really nice to have such a universal palette that has several different skin-like tones in it, several different undertones as well, including warm, neutral, and cool, and being able to use them together to create a beautiful smoky eye on anyone. Now here, you're seeing me use one of the shades that match pretty close to the bronzer we used, to use as a backdrop to the other shades we layer on top. I only dipped into the shadow once, packed it onto the upper lid, and spending my time diffusing and smoking this outwards before I also run this along the lower lash line. So now that we have the first shade smoked out, I'm using one of the deeper, warmer shades to blend closer to her lower and upper lash line. If I'm not mistaken, it's the shade Matte 9. It has more of a red undertone to it, so it's gonna complement and bring out the beautiful shade of green in her eyes. I just kind of stamp it right at the lash line and flick it upwards before taking the first brush I use to further diffuse it out. Now to further accentuate the shape of her eyes, I'm taking that same shade and creating almost a soft crease right above the natural crease of her eye. I start from the outer corner and start blending this up about two thirds in. Once I'm done here, I've mixed in one of the deeper, cooler tones to give this crease we've created even more depth and dimension. This goes to show why I love a palette that has different undertones to it. I like using the warmer tones to smoke out the eyes, and then for the, the detail work like this, I can incorporate the cooler tones to give the natural illusion of a crease. Of course, you can go even more dramatic with this by adding in black eyeshadow, but I, I'm really loving how soft this is looking. And I gotta mention, it, it's quick and easy to create. It only takes a couple of minutes. Now, moving right along, I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara to run through both her top and bottom lashes. This is another reason why I didn't care to add black eyeshadow to this eye look. This mascara will give us the depth and drama I want right at that lash line. And it'll also help blend in the false lashes I apply later on with her natural lashes. Once I've applied the mascara, I'm grabbing this one size point made gel black eyeliner and gliding this across the upper lash line to glam up this look a bit. I'm keeping this really quite close to the lash line, especially on the inner two thirds. And as I reach the outer corner of the eye, look at what I do here. I'll start to lift this, this liner upwards, which will also lift her eye shape in a really flattering way. Now, what I like to do is I'll take an angled eyeliner brush and at the end of where we place that eyeliner, I'll drag it straight out to create a soft and diffused wing. Next up for brows, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder Duo in the shade Ash Brown and using this to softly fill in and shape her brows. She already has beautiful brows, so less is more here, but I'm more so doing this to match her brows to the color and density of her hair. By the way, I almost forgot to mention, for the first time ever on my channel, I finally filmed a full hair tutorial. I'm gonna upload it this Friday, so if you wanna learn how I created the hairstyle that you see in the outro shots, be sure to check out that tutorial. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Next, I'm taking the Benefit Clear Brow Setter Gel and using this to lock those hairs into place all day. It's the perfect way to finish off a brow that I think suits her perfectly. What do you guys think about it? I feel we kept it soft and natural, but yet still defined enough in a way that complements her face shape. Anyways, after this, I'm heading back to the complexion using the Jouer Powder Highlighter in the shade Citrine and using this to add back some glow and radiance to the skin, specifically the highest points of her face like the cheekbones, the tip of the nose, the, um, the cupid's bow, along with the inner corner of the eyes and the brow bone. I almost kept this look matte today, but <laughs> how could I not include a highlighter in a Sephora favorites video of mine? And there's so many I love too. There's this one from Jouer, 
There's the Fenty Freestyle highlighters, the, the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow, the Danessa Myricks highlighting palette. There's a lot of good ones out there that give a beautiful finish to the skin. But now that I'm done with the skin, I can start on the lips using the Makeup by Mario Master Matte's Pro Lip Palette. I created a custom shade from those colors to create the perfect nude brown to line her lips with. Like the eyeshadow palette I used earlier, this is another fantastic product to have, especially for makeup artists. You can create and customize any lip color you can imagine. Of course, you have the staples there, like you know the pinks and the peachy nudes and the burgundies, but you also have the primary colors as well, red, yellow, and blue, in addition to white and black that allow you to create any shade you want. And I also like the finish of these. It's a satin matte finish, but not so matte that it's difficult to blend out. You know what I mean? And because of that, it gives me more freedom to create the finish I'm going for. If I want a matte lip, I'll leave it as is, but if I want a high shine finish, I'll either mix in some clear gloss into the custom shade I'm creating with these pigments, or I'll just layer a gloss on top of the lip, which is what I'll later do. But before I do that, as you see here, I've created another custom pale pink shade for the center of the lip. Once I apply it on, I'll then buff and diffuse it out with an eyeshadow blending brush for that worn in soft ombre effect. Once I've done so, I'll then reach for this buxom full force plumping lip gloss and apply this right on top for that high shine finish. This wouldn't be a Sephora's favorites video without this product. This is my number one favorite gloss of all time since day one on my channel. And it's in the shade Dolly. I, I, I forgot if I said that already, but yeah, I'll link it down below along with all the other products I'm using today so you can check it out and shop it for yourself, which leads me to the last product I'm using today to make these products completely budge-proof and long-lasting, the One Size On Till Dawn Setting Spray. It'll set and lock this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how I created this soft glam look on our naturally beautiful model. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.